let there be light. In today's episode, how to make a lamp from a glass bottle. My name is Edward and I tinker with things. Hello again. This project has four parts and the part one is about measuring and creating a rough sketch of what I want to get in the end. As everything in life, a project must be planned and measured slash calculated. For accomplishing this part of the project, I grab my calipers and start measuring the cut bottle glass I already have. If you're interested in how I got that bottle cut, click on the link on the screen or in the description. An advice, put everything on paper. It will help a lot if you have anything but a little, little project. After that, I took some measurements of the cable profile, meaning its width and its height. Then I had to measure the screw head to know how much chamfer for the screw hole should be, because I would use a countersunk screw. Lastly, I take the dimension for the light bulb socket. I have to slow down the time lapse here because I really need to point out a technique that I saw on Maker's Muse YouTube channel. And that is how to measure the distance between the center of two circular holes having the same diameter using a digital caliper without making any calculations. Just be sure that the digital caliper is set to zero when it's on zero position. Measure the diameter of one of the holes Now press zero button to reset the zero position of your caliper. Then measure the distance between the far edges of those two holes. The result you see on the screen is the distance between the two centers of the holes. The explanation is simple. Just measure the distance between the far edges of the two holes and subtract two times the radius of the holes meaning one diameter. Thanks for the tip, Angus. Ok, let's go and create the rough sketch of the base. After that, it's better to put absolutely all the imaginable measurements and the dimensions on the sketch, even if some of them seem to be redundant, meaning they can be computed from other measurements. It will help a lot when the digital project will be made. You'll see that I missed a few measurements here and I had to do them in my head on the fly when creating the digital object and I miscalculated. So, put as much as possible. Just as a note, I created the neck of the base to be a little smaller than the diameter of the cut bottle glass. The fit from those two being a very loose one, because even if I use the same type of bottle, the diameters of the bottles are not the same. The tolerance in creating a bottle is poor. So, loose fit, then adapt. You'll see how. Phase 2. Creating the digital 3D model. As previously said, the tolerances for creating glass bottle is quite poor. So, even between the same type of bottles, you might have the surprise to see that the diameter is very, way too much. You imagine that this will happen for sure if different types of bottles are used. 
for this reason I can publish a fit them all 3D model. So I'm gonna show you how to make it using a simple tool that can be loaded in your browser. Nothing to install. This tool is called Tinkercad. You'll find the link for the site in the description. I won't enter in detail about Tinkercad, what it does, how it can be used. There are tons of tutorials out there. I only show you a couple of basic techniques that I'll use in creating the base of the blamp model. First, centering two objects. Grab the two objects you want to center and grab the ruler. Let's say I want to create a cylindrical hole in that cube. I set the cylinder as a hole, adjust its diameter, then set the ruler to measure the distance between the center of the objects. By default it measures the distance to the starting point of the object. Don't get confused, Tinkercad's ruler will show the tip for the next way of measurements. So if you see use endpoint, that means you are in use midpoint mode and vice versa. Yeah, I know. I set the ruler to use midpoint, then look at the values on X and Y for the cube. I set the same values for the cylinder and voila, the two objects are centered. Now, if I want to expand the cube, keeping the center as fixed point, I would only have to modify the values on the axis I want to expand, while the ruler is in use midpoint mode. If I want to expand the object, keeping as a fixed point the point, let's say the corner that is closest to the origin of the ruler, I would switch in use endpoint mode and make the needed modifications. If I want to use another corner as a fixed point, I would just reposition the ruler near that corner, just for the clarity, then rotate it to fit my needs, then make the adjustments on the object's dimensions. Ok, that was the short tutorial. Let's get the model done. I'm just following the instruction from the trusty sketch, making mistakes from time to time. As a note, you can turn at any point any objects into hole that making possible to see what's inside the object. Ok. 
Also, you can hide at any time the selected object, the light bulb icon from the shape menu. To bring it back, just click on show all the light bulb icon from the upper menu bar. Yet another thing, you can group two or more objects and create more complex one. That I am doing here with the whole objects for the screws. Oops, miscalculation. The object is ready to be exported from Tinkercad. Make sure that everything in design is checked. Then import the file in your favorite slicer and go to phase 3, that means printing the object. I will not bore you to death with the printing phase, I'll jump right to the phase 4, assembling the stuff. This is the end result of the previous phases. There are a lot of strings inside the object because I didn't want to use support while printing. The reason for that is, those strings are very easy to remove. As you will see, the supports, well, not so easy to remove, especially in the interior. Everything else looks fantastic. Note that everything you see in the assembly step, it was me doing this for the first time, so have some mercy. Actually you'll see that the assembly operation for the second, the smaller lamp, took way less than for the first one. The holes from the printed lamp base and the holes from the light bulb socket are fitting.
I see for the first time this type of light bulb socket and it has a very interesting mechanism for making contact with the electrical wires with some kind of clips. You just have to push the wires there and they will be kept in place. The idea, as said earlier, was the fit between the glass and the base to be a very loose one, but in this way how the glass will stay on the base. It's way too loose and if the lamp is tilted a little bit the glass falls. Well, MacGyver time, use a rubber band. The fit is now perfect and the lamp has a certain look, don't you think? The light bulb is also fitting like a glove. I'm trying now to attach the power plug to the electrical cable. Again, this is the first time when I see this type of power plug. The wires are attached to the terminals using a screw.
I don't know how long the wire should be on each side, so I'm just probing. Almost done. Let's put the cover and screw it in place. Hmm. For some reason it doesn't fit. how I'm moving the two pieces. And it doesn't seem to be the wires that are blocking it. It just doesn't fit. side. Now it fits, but the cable is on the other side of the power plug, the side that doesn't have a hole for the cable. the wires again. Power plug is now installed. Let's plug the lamp and see if the light bulb is lighting up or a fuse will blow. Yay! It's working! I'm so happy! I made a lamp and it's working on a first try.
As a side note, after revising the footage, the time for assembling this first lamp was almost 40 minutes, including all the mishaps and mistakes. Let's see how much it will take for the second one, when I don't have to discover how the wires are connecting to the light bulb and power plug. little under 15 minutes. Not bad at all. And now I have a beer themed lamp too. Those two I created previously are some kind of night lamps. I was thinking that in one of my future projects to make a desk lamp. You know, that kind of lamp with an arm. The way of getting the glass, let's say bell, in place on the arm, it's more complicated, I have to think on something, most probably printable, to obtain this result. Please leave a comment if you're interested in seeing me making such kind of lamp. I think it will be an interesting and challenging project. See you next time!